I had to, if I had to pick one thing that I do, well, I can't just pick one thing. I, I do, I write, I direct. Uh, I'm a cinematographer, an editor, and I guess by nature a producer, just because you have to be when you're doing that. So anything, everything, whatever I need to do. As far as being interested in making films, uh, I was probably, it's probably 20, and I, I had this, I had this like epiphany, like, oh, somebody makes these things I'm watching. Like, I, I'd li I would always like movies, as it were, but it just hit me like, man, somebody's out there, like, like some, it's somebody's job to make these films. Somebody, there's a lot of people working on these. You know, I always thought about credits and stuff. It's like, I guess every, anybody can do that. So I should do that. Probably six months later, I got a 35 millimeter still camera and started shooting photos. I, I, I kind of thought, yeah, I want to do something. I want to create this. And I, I don't think I knew which role I wanted. I didn't know if I wanted to write the stories or, I didn't know enough about filmmaking to make a decision then. I just knew I wanted to be a part of it in some way. I was an engineer. I had my degrees in mechanical engineering, and I, I mean, I knew then that I wanted to make films, but I kept on with a degree and uh, minored in film studies. I remember filming bands back in college, which is kind of funny, because um, I, I do that now. <laughs> but yeah, I would, uh, I mean, I was big into film, but I wasn't making films yet, because I just didn't know what I was doing. Um, but I remember like the campus uh, TV station would let me borrow the camera when bands were playing to go out and film them. And we were, I mean, we also like pitched like a jackass type show to <laughs> the campus station because we had a bunch of ideas for it. Right now I'm in the middle of a project where I'm doing one short every month uh, called 12 in 2012. And it's, <laughs> it's a bit ambitious, <laughs> um, but I've done a couple of narrative shorts as part of the series, uh, one of which is basically a silent film. Um, we shot uh, basically in a day, in a morning, afternoon, um, didn't really have a script or anything, just showed up single, just two of us, um, and I, I shot in my grandmother's house, and it was kind of a personal story for me, and I was, it was almost an exercise to see if I could tell a story with a single character completely in silence. Um, so it was it was nice, it was an emotional shoot and I'm really proud of the way that turned out as, as well as a couple of the other shorts from from, um, from that series. Um, so probably that film or another one, I, another narrative I did, the very first film in the series I did back in January. Uh, they both turned out really well considering we went out for both of them with no real script or anything, just said, let's just go make a film. Being on the, I, I had some ideas about this project before I started, um, and it was to do a film, like a very different film each month. And so I've shot about, you know, I shot a music documentary, I shot in a restaurant kitchen, I shot in a food truck, I shot at a beard competition, um, at a farm, a blacksmith. So the documentary stuff is just taking me wherever, whatever I think is interesting. Um, but as far as narrative stuff goes, uh, there's usually drinking involved. <laughs> Realism, um, in whatever way I can, I guess seeking for truth. So the, the stories, none of them have been happy stories, I guess. Um, the first one was about uh, a process server uh, handing repossession, like repossessing a house basically, handing bank papers over. And the second one was about like the a, a, a intense loss in a person's life and the third one was people fighting over something that should have been happy and it wasn't so it's I guess it's intense situations without there being much melodrama I guess yeah the, the stuff I studied in college just changed what I thought about film and I spent a semester studying Mike Lee's work and that which really like blew my mind it was difficult to digest the Mike Lee stuff, and I realized that's that's what I'd rather be doing. And that's what I want to work toward is making things that do cause you to think about it days later that you don't want to like, or it makes you angry, or makes you uh, sad, and you, you don't understand it at first. But you have to rethink the stuff that makes you think. You know, I think filmmakers of a certain level 
you have that ability to make films that don't have to be commercially viable or uh, don't have to make everybody happy. You can you can you can speak your mind. You can have a voice. And uh, I think you know even like as far as independent film goes, you have a as an independent filmmaker, you have a responsibility to do that because you can't be Hollywood. You can't. You can't approximate it, and you just look worse by trying to. But there's things you can do that Hollywood can't do. Um, that, I, that to me, that's the draw. I went out there and worked on a film and said, "No, I don't ever want to do that." Um, and that was that was probably eight years ago, and it just it turned me off of it completely. It's fun to visit, but there's there's a certain I mean, there's, there's a certain voice you have, especially in the South. You have some incredible Southern filmmakers who are saying original things, making great films. Um, and I feel like that's another responsibility you have is to, to represent uh, your area. And I, I think that's what's kept me here, is wanting to make a story about this area specifically, like involving local people. Every, Every, you know, involving everything I can local. Didn't see the chance, the opportunity of making the films I wanted to make out there. Um, I feel like you have a freedom here to play by your own rules, not have to listen, not have to do your time pulling cables on somebody else's films and stuff. Yeah, I just wanted to make my own films, and I didn't, I didn't see myself being able to do that there, which I guess. Seems odd to say, yeah, I want to come to this back to this small town in South Carolina, and I can totally make films there. Uh, but it was just the the creative freedom. There's interesting voices here. There's interesting culture, and I, I don't think there's necessarily a style of filmmaking going on here. I think we have a responsibility to have a voice in showing the South in some realistic way and showing stories that represent like the human condition of people here. It's it's like the South is this thing of spectacle um, that, that exists to parody or to, to condescend toward. You should make films specific to what you know, to where you are, to the people around you, um, the stories that are going on in your life. Otherwise, it's just it's farcical and it just it's not real, it's not true. So I guess seeking the truth is is why I make films. Yeah, I, I think you have a lot of people trying to, like, oh, bring in these film jobs to the state, you know, let's, let's make it a filmmaking place. Uh, I don't think that, that has to be, like, you don't have to have Hollywood coming in to make films. I think it's more important to, to make your own local and regional films um, with your own ideas. There's no reason, to, I mean, the best films I'm seeing coming out are people who are going out and just making their own fucking film. They're raising the money however they can, borrowing cameras, whatever, taking a small crew. I and mean, this is this is from all over. This is the best independent films I'm seeing in the last, I don't know, ten years. It's it's young people who just aren't afraid to go out and be graphic and they're not they're not worried about plot conventions or whatever. They're not worried about trends. They're just doing whatever they think is a good film. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's just as many terrible films that come out of that. So that's what I don't see here is a community of people willing to take chances. You don't have to like be painting broad strokes with your camera. You can just show what's going on and maybe there's a story there, maybe there's not. And if it's not, you may not, you may not show it to anybody. But a lot of times life happens in front of the camera. If you if you hold the camera on something long enough, I can't remember, somebody said this years and years ago, if you put the camera on something long enough, you'll get a story out of it. To learn, I think it helps to be around other people working. Um, find somebody shooting shorts or a feature and go volunteer on it or try to get work on it. Grab a camera and go out and start shooting. <laughs> Develop an eye. Yeah, just seek knowledge. That's. If you, if you don't have a voice, if you don't have, you, you, need, you need technique, I guess. But once you get past that, making a film is, is having something to say. And not everybody's got something to say. So go out and, and meet people, talk to people. 
ex hands-on experience is irreplaceable, but I think you can do that without film school. So it depends on what you're going for, and it's always going to be what you, like, making the most of what you're there. Sure, somebody, one person might get a ton out of it. Um, I've talked to a number of people who went and said, you go and hopefully you have some good contacts when you're out. And it goes back to having something to say and, and having a voice. And I, don't th I think that's something you're not going to learn in school. That's something you learn by making films. Or by getting older, <laughs> living, <laughs> experiencing things. Uh, yeah, I mean, working in the area, you, you're limited. Your options are limited. Um, also, if you find someone you're good working with, um, someone who brings something else to the table, you won't have that person around. I like being in control of the process. I don't necessarily like being in complete control of the story which may make for some difficult shooting when you get to bigger pictures and stuff. If you know your story, if you know the end, if you know what, exactly where you're going with the film, don't make a film. There's no point. Just write a, write a story because you already have it. There's nothing you can learn by working through it. I, I do like directing and I think I take a, a weird stance on it. Um, editing I love once I make myself do it, but because I'm not organized, it, it's, it's it's like, I don't, I don't know where to start. I think my cinematography has a style. And that may just be due to the fact that I've been doing that longer. And that I do a lot of like, documentary type stuff. So there's, um, you know, I want to be in control of the camera. It's probably where my style sticks out because I've, and also because of the music stuff, music videos and, and shooting live performances right here on this porch. <laughs> Whatever you put your, your time in the most that in your own creative work, that's gonna stand out. So, you know, if I'd spent more t if I'd spent time acting or directing or, you know, a lot of time editing, maybe those things would stand out as something that, you know, I had to have a definite style of. And you know, hopefully one day I can say that I do. The twelve and twenty twelve project has its own website where I release each film whenever I finish it, it goes up. Um, I've used Kickstarter to raise money for the project. The various various social media things, I've, I've built a handful of websites around the music videos and around my photography and all that. Um, and I've honestly, I've connected with other filmmakers that way too. Yeah, some of the more influential films I've come across has been just, I read, a, I read about them on a blog somewhere or saw a, a link posted somewhere and clicked through and read about this film that showed. When I was, I was working retail for a while and I'd have people come in who knew me from seeing my work online and would talk to me about it and I'd have no idea who they were. And so that's, and then like track me down and ask me to do, you know, work for them or whatever. And so that's, yeah, I think it's, you have to be in tune with that to, to be successful, whatever that means for you. I mean, to, to get your film seen. It, they're, they're really, I think it's a fallout from, from old Hollywood. I think it just still exists and you, you see, in the younger generation you're starting to see a lot more um, female writer-directors. It's one of those glass ceiling type situations where you have, uh, you have a lot of guys interested in filmmaking because most films you see when you're growing up, they're marketed to 12 year old boys. And that's just the nature of Hollywood. But yeah, I can totally name many, many more uh, male filmmakers than female. Yeah, I, I, I think it's just like in a lot of industries or whatever you want to call it, there's gender inequality. And it's just been that way for so long that we haven't gotten over it yet. And there should be more uh, female fi filmmakers out there with, with voices. And you know, maybe in, in this in this uh, in this area that's who has access to to filmmaking or you know, the culture pushes males or females towards certain roles, um, more so than it may may do in New York or LA. So I, I'd like to travel around and do more of that, meeting bands and, and shooting live performance stuff. Um, just because I enjoy it. I enjoy having that intimate contact, I guess, like seeing shows up close and personal. Uh, but yeah, as, as soon as I finish editing these 12 films and <laughs> get all the DVDs out to Kickstarter backers, and 
I guess maybe send out a few festival submissions. Um, I gotta make that feature. So I see people who put so much pressure on themselves to make this film, like all capital letters, this huge triumphant thing. And it's like once you once you do it, your life's gonna be different. When it's the same fucking thing day in and day out. And that's why I forced myself to do this project too. It's like, can I make 12, can I, I'm, I'm sick of people saying, oh, I've been waiting for a year and a half to make this short film. Go out and fucking make a film. Do what it takes. If you're thinking that big, maybe you're thinking too big. The, the, the making of it, the being out there, the being in it, oh man, 12, 13, 15 hour days, you know, <laughs> oh, it's, that shit's fun. I mean, it's exhausting, but there's no better time than being out there making a film like, hanging out with your friends, something that uh, Hal Ashby said to John Voight one time, and this is on, I saw it on a documentary or something, and it's like a bunch of them around, somebody couldn't get his lines, and just was like, just pissed off, and Ashby pulled him aside and said, think about it like this, we're all a bunch of friends, hanging out, making films together. What could we be doing right now that's any better than this moment? And it like brought such a calm over the actor, he said, yeah, that's right. He went in and nailed it. Meeting people and tracking down the projects that are interesting, like reading a script and saying, you don't need $200,000 to do this. We can go out right now, we could, we could do that for $5,000 if, if, if we were starving, if we have to starve to do it. And I think it sometimes comes to that, being willing to starve for what you're doing. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing is getting out there, meeting people and Finding people who you can work with who get get your art, who get your technique, get what you're trying to say, and I, I you know, I say that's the thing you need to do, but that's also the hardest part. Probably it's the hardest part for me is finding people who like got what I was trying to do. And once you have that, go with those people and make five terrible films. I've heard that before. It's like, yeah, go make ten shitty films, get those out of the way, because you're gonna do it. But I don't even think that's the case. Just start making films and you'll know, like, you'll feel yourself coming into it.